Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, July 13th, 2018. I'm Fredicia Liburd. The Social Policy and Sustainable Human Development Unit on Thursday, July 12th, held a seminar on mainstreaming the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, into National Development Planning. The SDGs are 17 global goals set by the United Nations in 2015. They cover a range of economic, social and environmental issues, each with a list of targets to be achieved by 2030. Some 24 line ministries, departments and partners were invited to Thursday's seminar at the Red Cross headquarters, where Senior Policy Officer Ansem Keynes gave the overview. These 17 priority areas represent the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of which St. Kitts and Nevis is a party and to which the Nevis Island Administration has given its commitment to achieve. While the Social Policy and Sustainable Human Development Unit will serve as the hub or the coordinating force, if you will, behind the SDGs, the responsibility does not fall solely on the Sustainable Development Unit to implement the SDGs. That would simply be impractical given the very broad and cross-cutting nature of the Sustainable Development Goals. What we would wish to see happen is for each core ministry and or department as identified to sort of take ownership of the SDG that is relevant to its work and its core operations and to drive that SDG. Therefore, it is for each ministry to craft programs which correspond to the various targets under its specifically assigned SDG. The seminar also included a presentation by Principal Assistant Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, June Brown, on the role of the SDGs in the overall development thrust of the government. SDGs matter for governments, for businesses and for individuals. They must form a part of the plans and the priorities of government um, from the eradication of poverty right down to the strengthening of partnerships across the board. And the strategic plans of all ministries are excellent tools for formulating and implementing initiatives to achieve the sustainable development goals from a sectorial level. And so mobilization of our domestic resources, prioritization and sequencing is, is important. Mobilizing your national resources does not mean that government alone will do it. It means that the private sector will take a critical part in mobilizing resources financially, technically, and from a human perspective. Alsted Pemberton, Director of the Social Policy and Sustainable Human Development Unit, chaired the opening ceremony. We need to take ownership of the SDGs that are relevant to our ministries and our department. And in order for us to accelerate the, the process of achieving the, the targets, we need to target some resources, so we need some funds available um, as well. We need policy support from your minister, your ministries, and so um, when you get back to your department and your ministries, you need to be able to be in a position to articulate what you would have garnered here this morning to your ministry, your peers, so that funds could become available because policy support is very important. The presentations were followed by an open discussion moderated by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Development, Keith Glasgow, with the assistance of Director of the Department of Statistics, Doriel Phillip. The 14th of July was supposed to be the tasting showcase, which was scheduled to be held at Nisbet Plantation. The showcase is still on, but we, when our team at the Ministry looked at certain logistics, we decided to push back the date until the 21st. So the new date for the testing showcase is now Saturday, 21st July. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, John Hanley, noted that the reason for the postponement of the testing showcase is to allow more persons to take advantage of the opportunity. The cost is only 20 EC or 8 US, and that is a ridiculous deal. You get the opportunity to sample from at least eight restaurants and there would be other exhibitors as well. So it's a great opportunity and we look forward to seeing you on the 21st of July at Nisbet Plantation. Tickets are available from the Ministry of Tourism's office at the Social Security Building 469 
from the Navy's Tourism Authority downtown, 469-7550. From City Drug Store, 469-5430. So you can... And also some of the participating restaurants will be selling tickets as well. Um, so we have lots of tickets available. Make sure you, you come and get yours before they run out. Hanley noted that another tasting showcase is scheduled to take place at Park Hyatt on St. Kitts on Sunday, July 15th. That event completely sold out and thus he is encouraging persons to purchase their tickets for the event on Nevis as early as possible. Still to come. So it's this Sunday afternoon, July the 15th, 5 p.m. at the Urbenta's Bar and Restaurant. The details right after this break. Welcome back. The Department of Environment and by extension the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis continues to undertake initiatives through a series of national consultations to ensure that necessary measures are put in place to protect lives and livelihoods as climate change is becoming more prevalent worldwide. The most recent consultation held on Thursday, July 12th, was aimed at reviewing the draft National Climate Change Adaptation Strategy which was developed earlier this year based on consultations that commenced in 2017. The development of a national climate change strategy is a vital step in an effort to develop a climate resilient economy. This strategy will provide a basis for local communities and key sectors to assess their key climate risk and vulnerabilities while enabling climate resilient actions to be mainstreamed into planning processes, said Cheryl Jeffers, conservation officer in the Department of Environment. She added that the development of the strategy will allow for better management and minimization of risks posed by climate change. Jeffers appealed to all to think outside the box. She noted that no one community, department or ministry will have all the answers, but learning from and building on each other's strengths is vital. Jeffers made a brief mention of the Caribbean regional suffering from directly and indirectly from ravages of hurricanes Irma and Maria in 2017. She noted that as a nation and a region on a whole, we have to come together for the greater good. Senior Minister, the Honourable Vance Amory, has echoed his delight with the initiative taken by the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis to sensitise public officials with the Integrity in Public Life Act, which he describes as extremely important. The forum to sensitise public officials who would be impacted by the Integrity in Public, Li public Life Act took place at St. Kitts Marriott Resort on Thursday, July 12th. Minister Amory said that this act speaks to the government's thrust to ensure there is transparency at all times. The senior minister explained that as a public servant, the act further reinforces what is already in place and that is to act in an ethical manner. He expounded on integrity as is the key word in the title of the act. The public of, a public official has the duty to take all necessary action to comply with the provisions of the code of conduct he or she should carry out in his or her duties in accordance with law and with lawful instructions and ethical standards which relates to his or her functions. A public official shall be honest, impartial and efficient and shall perform his or her duties to the best of his or her ability with skill, fairness, understanding 
having regard only for the public interest and the relevant circumstances of the case, and he or she shall always conduct himself or herself in such a way that the public's confidence and trust in the integrity, impartiality, and effectiveness of the public service are preserved and enhanced. Culturama 44 is just around the corner and Nevis is full of activity. This coming Sunday, July 15th, we'll see the first stage in the Senior Calypso competition, which is the quarterfinals, and that will take place at your Brenta Bar and Restaurant in Cades Bay. Chairman of Culturama, Abenati Liberd, went into detail about Sunday's event. In first position, we have Giro. Second position, Lady Hammond. Third on stage would be The Enforcer. Then Pupa Wheeler comes on at number four, Black Hat at number five, Positive P at number six, This and That at number seven, Baker comes in at number eight, Irvin at number nine, X-Man comes in at number 10, appearing in position 11, we have Polo, in position 12, Charis D, position 13, Wingy, position 14, we have Murray, West Side comes in at number 15, followed by Nutsi at number 16, Suki at number 17, Sweeties at number 18, Daddy Nature at number 19, Lady Smooth comes in at number 20, followed by Reiko B at 21, and Astro comes up at number 22. Liber is encouraging persons to support the event. We will also have a guest appearance by the reigning king, King Hollywood. So it's this Sunday afternoon, July the 15th, 5 p.m. at the Urbenta's Bar and Restaurant. And the cover cost for this event is only $15. See you there. Culturama 44 will officially begin on Thursday, July 26th and conclude on Tuesday, August 7th with the slogan, Fet Food Folklore, Culturama 44. That's how we end this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Library. Thank you for viewing. Known as Uwali, land of beautiful waters by its native inhabitants and later nicknamed Queen of the Caribbean by British settlers, Nevis has long relied on its natural prowess and resources to create livelihoods for its people. The people of Nevis have long remained connected to the gifts nature has bestowed. As an ambassador of this majestic island, it is my duty to encourage my people to nurture, preserve and protect what makes us unique as a people and strong as a country. Woo!